Because it's, it's real easy to be nice to folks that are, are nice to you. Or be nice to folks that aren't problematic. But it just when you when you live for God, you have to extend love the way He extends love to everybody. Good morning and God bless you, Saints. I am your host, Kendra Smith Amos, and I'm super excited to have you all. Join me again on another episode of Create with Kendra, a place where you can be inspired, challenged, and changed. Good morning, good morning, good morning for those that are driving to work. I hope you got your nice hot cup of coffee. Those that are sleeping in, (laughs) wake up soon. (laughs) But I am just really excited about this episode. As you can tell, my energy is up here. (laughs) I'm really excited to talk about... What we're going to get into today, okay? So this is a message, I I hope, of encouragement for folks and also presenting a challenge to others um, because it is so easy to get caught up in our own selves, in our own way, and we forget about other people. So today, as you read on the title, we're going to be talking about what it means to show yourself friendly, It is so important to show yourself friendly. And like I just said a second ago, it's really easy to be a person and, you know, there is part of me that I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of person that's like, you know, I don't need new friends kind of, you know, attitude, but we we gonna get into it just a little deeper. So we can have this attitude of no new friends. I only mess with the people that I mess with. You know, I don't speak to you unless you speak to me kind of thing. If that's you, raise your hand. If you're in the car, keep one hand on the wheel. If you, if you, you know, in the kitchen cooking breakfast, go in and raise your hand. Because that can be a lot of us. And when you think about the selfish ways that we operate in life and how we are exclusive. It's really us thinking about ourselves and not others, right? I know I was, I was telling, I, I, I just recently um, became friends with um, this, this new couple, right? And I'm the kind of person, well, I say I was the kind of person, or I'm trying to break out and grow. I'll say that. I'm in between, saints, of I have great friends. I have great people that support me. I don't need to have a whole bunch of friends. I'm not saying that you need to be, you know, soul sisters with everybody. What I'm saying is if God allows someone to come into your life. We have to, we have to, you know, accept that. We have, I mean, I would advise you to accept it because if God does it, it's just a great idea out the gate, right? And so I remember, um, shout out to Larry and Jordan. I, I was, I was in a, in a space where I was like, I don't need new friends, but transitioning from my singleness into marriage, it was important for me to have friends or create friendships with other young couples. And so just because I had this attitude of, I don't need new friends, does not mean that attitude was good for me. And so when God brings people in your life, and even if God brings someone in your life for a moment or a day, or just one conversation. My question to you is, will you be obedient? Will you say yes to it? Will you be kind? Will you show what Christ is all about through your interaction, right? Um, And some people may say, hey, well, Kendra, you know, I have my particular ways, and I'm not changing it. I'm comfortable with my crew. I don't trust people and I don't want anyone coming into my life. I'm not saying that you have to create life 
long relationships with people. But what it doesn't hurt is to show yourself friendly. It does not cost you a dime to extend kindness to other people. A simple hello, a simple smile, a simple greeting can change someone's life. And I really want to to remind us that wherever you are, if you're in a school setting, if you're in a church, more specifically, wherever you are, you are a representation of God and of God's love. And if you aren't exercising friendly behavior, kindness, and extending yourself just a little bit, we have to reevaluate how we're rocking and how we're rolling. Um, I want to give you an example because um, I will tell on myself before I call y'all out on anything or call you to anything. I remember um, my husband and I were at the Dollar Tree because, you know, the Dollar Trees are for the saints, okay? <laughs> so I was at the Dollar Tree and I was in the aisle, I was picking up something, and this lady um, comes down the same aisle and she's she's like, where did you find this and this? And I told her, and she just struck up a whole conversation and it just started getting deep and getting deep. And I'm sitting, or well, standing <laughs> across from this lady. I'm just like, girl, I'm just trying to get what I need to get and I need to go. And so I find myself standing there for a few minutes and I start to get irritated and I started to, you know, just be like, okay, girl, I need to go. But, the, but in reality, I had nowhere to be. I was just making a store stop. But my attitude was, I don't want to sit here and listen to you. I don't care about nothing that you're talking about. And, you know, after she was done, I told Malik, and this is, this is how we do. You know, this is how we do. <laughs> You know, when, when somebody says something or you're annoyed, it's real easy to go and gossip or talk about your annoyed experience to somebody. But in reality, that's us putting that, that person down. And I was like, well, I don't know why she was talking like that. You know, I didn't care about nothing. She was saying that, da, 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 and I'm just going and going on. And he, he told me, he said, Kendra. Maybe you were the only conversation that she had all day. Maybe she just needed somebody to listen to her. And right there, I got convicted where I stood. I said, oh, you're right. Sometimes you never know what people are going through, what challenges they face. Some people will go all day without a human interaction. Some people may have lost a loved one that was extremely close to them and are having feelings of depression. Some folks are socially awkward, you know? And some people are just so used to being judged by the folks that they are around. So what? Is it, what would it cost you to just take a moment to receive someone? What would it cost you to invest in two minutes of a conversation, in the conversation, and not talk bad about that person when you leave? What would it cost you for you to go up to a visitor at your church and say, God bless you. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you come back another time. What would it cost you to wave at your neighbor that lives right next door to you? Nothing. It costs you nothing. Um, because we have the opportunity. 
We have opportunity to be the angels that other people need. We do. And we never know what impact we would have on someone if we were just to extend kindness. Folks every day are on the brink of something or on the brink of depression or on the brink of suicide or on the brink of leaving, of giving up. And not just in their day-to-day lives, but giving up on God. But if you were just extend yourself outside of yourself and say, I'm going to love on this person, it won't cost you nothing. I'm going to invest some time into this person. And let me tell you, it'll help you grow. It'll help you in, in extending compassion and understanding what compassion and empathy is. It'll give you a reason to pray. Being friendly and being kind is and showing love is a reflection of who Christ is. My question to you are is, are you the reflection of who Christ is? Or are you comfortable and content doing you? Because the fact of the matter is people that aren't or that refuse to grow in Christ will not will never grow in grace. Are 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 I don't want to say this. People that refuse to grow in Christ are stuck. They are stuck. It, it makes no sense to me to accept Jesus and be like, okay, that's it. What's the point? Jesus is not an exclusive club. It's not a members only club. When you accept the Lord, your life, your words, your actions are your witness. How many people have you told about Jesus? How many, and I'm I'm not even just saying like, go and pass out tracks and that's not the point. The point is that people will read your life before they open up the Bible. People will read your life and your actions before they even come to church. And if you thinking, oh, somebody else will say hello to them. Somebody else will greet them. You got it wrong. And if you cannot grow in Christ, what are you doing? If you can't extend yourself out of your selfishness, what are you doing? So I just hope that everyone would just think about what are your blocks? What are the things that prevents you from being friendly? Because sometimes we just, sometimes we just like, I I don't want to do it. And another thing, is that that friendly behavior that I'm that I'm talking about should have no limits. So that also means being sweet and kind and loving and friendly to those folks that talk about you. Oop, Kendra, did you just say that? I sure did. Yeah, see, I just did that. <laughs> being kind and friendly to those people that talk about you. Those people that oppose you, those people that, that that if it take a little extra, then do the extra. 
do the extra. There is this scripture, and I have to find it. It talks about like, let me find the scripture. Okay, y'all, I found the scripture. <laughs> I found the scripture. It is Proverbs um, 25, verse 21 and 22, and it reads, and this is the um, New Living Translation, and it reads, um, Proverbs 25, verses 21 and 22. If your enemies are hungry, give them food to eat. If they are thirsty, give them water to drink. You will keep burning coals of shame on their heads and the Lord will reward you. The Bible says if your enemy hungers, if they are thirsty, and it also just it, it just, just anything, because it's, it's real easy to be nice to folks that are, are nice to you or be nice to folks that aren't problematic. But it just when you when you live for God, you have to extend love the way he extends love to everybody. And now we'll never love, you know, as big as he is because of our, you know, mortal flaws. But I'm saying we have to at least go for it. Because when you're kind and loving and friendly to even those that are considered enemies, it eats them up inside. It said it's like a heap of hot coals on them. Because how shamed do you feel being mean, rude, and nasty to somebody and they still show you the love of God? They're still kind to you. That in itself is a witness. So, saints, I just want to remind y'all, we can't be mean, saints. We can't be shady saints. We can't be unfriendly people of God. That don't even work. Well, I just don't like talking to people. I'm not social. Get there. Okay? I'm not saying you got to be a social butterfly. You got to be fluttering everywhere, child. What I'm saying is be kind. Be friendly. Because if you represent Jesus, you got to do it right. And his saints are not unfriendly. Okay, um, that's all I got to say <laughs> for this week. That's all I got to say. I came to the mic just for that. All right, y'all. I love y'all so much. And before we close, um, I do want to pray over us because I know it is a struggle for many. Um, so with all hearts and minds clear, Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. You are good. God, I pray that you help us and grow us and develop us into excellent representations of what it means to be kind and loving and friendly to others. God, I pray that you help us get out of our own way so we can do your will and bring others to Christ. God, I pray for those that have not experienced friendly behavior from people that call themselves Christians, that have been ignored, that have been talked about from other folks that say they, rep they represent you. God, I pray that you keep them and that you heal them and that you take a hold of them, that they don't let you go because it's real easy to get discouraged. It's real easy to say, I'm just going to give up. But God, I pray that your keeping power sustains them in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you help us represent you in the best way. Give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, tactics, you know, just, just tools to help us be better representation for you and to bring you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. That is the word on the street for this week. Go and be friendly to somebody. If it is you starting off with a smile, a wave, a hello, a God bless you, a good to see you. See, I didn't just gave you a whole list right there. Take the cheat sheet, okay? Let's be kind. Let's show love. Let's be great. I love y'all. I do. I really do. Be blessed. All right, y'all. Be blessed.